So um, welcome to our speaker series on anything but ordinary this ordinary season. And tonight with us is the Reverend Lacey Largent. She is the spiritual director at Camp Allen. She is the priest in charge at St. Francis in College Station um, and possibly other things. And so I'll let her tell you some more about that. Um, she's also, um, she's a priest and a clinical social worker. She's been also the long-term supply priest at the Church of the Redeemer in Houston. So beforehand, Lacey, uh, yes, I'm totally looking at your biography, uh, was a port chaplain at the Seafarers Ministry at the Port of Houston for almost 16 years. Um, and she left this ministry to serve in the spiritual care team coordinator for the Diocese of Texas following Hurricane Harvey. She was ordained in 1990. She's also served as the staff chaplain at St. Luke's uh, Episcopal Hospital, assistant rector at Good Shepherd in Kingwood, and the rector of St. Paul's in Navasota. Prior to her ordination of the priesthood, she was a licensed clinical social worker. So she's got degrees from the University of Arkansas, Washington University in St. Louis, Seminary of the Southwest. She's a certified Darren Way facilitator um, and a backstory preacher. So uh, please join me in welcoming uh, Lacey Largent. Yay! Hey. Lacey! Bravo! All right. Thank you. It is very good to be with you all today. I'm looking forward to this, and that was a great introduction. Let me make sure I'm there. Good, good. Uh, Carol and Jan mm -hmm. and Meredith, Marsha, Mer Merlin, Merlin. Yes. Mer Merlin. Um, Merlin. Merlin. Okay. Maggie yes. and Eileen, John, Rhonda, and Bill. 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 Okay. And, and Good. And James or somebody back there? <laughs> yes. James. And it's Marcia. Ah. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Unless I'm saying it wrong. Who knows? Marci <laughs> oh, Marcia. <laughs> Usually I do these without my glasses because I can't really see. So <laughs> there's uh, the eye doctor said there wasn't really a Zoom level of seeing. <laughs> I said, I just need to see on Zoom. That's all that matters anymore. And I can't. <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> I uh, know I either end up trying through the bifocal and uh, having my nose up at people or just looking at you blurred. So anyway, um, I'm going to kind of begin in a different way. I was invited to speak about um, the hospitality of Camp Allen. And so I'm going to begin in kind of a different way So, because it seems that we have plenty of time. Is there a format that y'all usually follow? Or do I talk for an hour? So you don't have to talk for an hour. Um, we're really kind of, um, we're back and forth conversation. There may be some questions, maybe some, some curiosity. You can share with us what you wanna share. You can show us what you wanna show. But basically this, this part is just learning about different patterns and ways that we order our lives in all sorts of different ways. And so um, there's a lot of affinity for Camp Allen. So um, intentionally flexible. Is that right, Mickey? Yes. Hey, okay. good, good. Well, um, I'm going to begin kind of uh, in a different way by talking about um, just having you imagine for a moment. Imagine that uh, you show up to a community that is not your own. You show up to a community that's not your own. You're being greeted with waving arms and beckoning gestures, almost desperate gestures, um, and a word of welcome. You are invited to sign in and register your presence. And you're assured that the head of the household's welcome for you uh, is there for you to be able to enter into the community's household. You're escorted inside and offered food and drink, and everyone within comes and speaks to you, while you yourself bring gifts. What does that 
sound like to you? Heaven. <laughs> what, what, where do you go when you imagine that happening? Birthday. Excuse me, Maggie? Birthdays? A birthdays, okay. Yeah, it feels um, like a party. Some kind of party, okay. Wedding. A wedding. Church. A church. It feels like heaven to me or paradise. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd go that far. And it, <laughs> and it really, all the way. <laughs> and it really, it really could be uh, something about a church, uh, except the signing in part. But you know what? I bet we're going to have to start doing that, too, to make sure we know who's all there when we finally get to go back to church. So it may even have that signing in aspect of it, too. But one of the that what I was describing was what it was like to be a port chaplain and to board a ship. And so all those things happened. People were excited. They waved me on board. Um, I had to sign in in order to get on the ships. Um, we had to make sure I had the permission of the captain to get on board. Um, and, and once I was inside, I was always offered some kind of beverage, some kind of food, usually something really bad for me, but really delicious. And um, they all were about hospitality. Everything was about hospitality once you were on their ship, which was their home, their home. And people would come to talk to me. Usually, yes, I did have phone cards and talking to their families was the most important thing. And uh, so we had things like magazines and all that kind of stuff. But um, I consider myself a world missionary for 16 years. And I experienced this kind of hospitality uh, daily. And um, except there was, and, and when you don't experience hospitality, it can be really embarrassing to the rest of the family. So one day um, um, I was boarding a ship and it got to the point, the seafarers were all excited. I told them what all I'd brought with me, all the little gifts and everything that I was going to bring on board. And so they announced me over the radio, Seafarer Center, port chaplain on board. And the captain answers back, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and the seafarer just turned red, just turned red as he could be. And I responded and eased the tension by saying, oh, good, the captain is a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, that kind of made the seafarer feel a little bit better. I was uh, accepted on board, but, um, you know, the welcome was, was not what they're used to. But um, anyway, I just began that way to talk about one kind of hospitality and that um, I've sort of been, I've been here at Camp Allen since 2000. Wow. We're, we're looking at 20 years now. Wow. And um, I uh, came here when Camp Allen made a decision to move away from the priests uh, running Camp Allen and being the director and CEO of Camp Allen to actually employing a person who knows what they're doing. And so I was the first one not to have to do what I don't know how to do. <laughs> and for us to get a lay person to come in and, uh, and help Camp, Camp Allen just bloom and blossom and uh, grow in all kinds of incredible ways and by taking on a different role and, and while uh, we work together in our different roles uh, to provide the hospitality that Camp Allen does. And um, I guess I'll give a, just a little sense that John asked the question, a little bit of an update on what's happening right now, uh, and then go backwards a bit into uh, how we sort of see hospitality. Um, we had a, uh, last week on Thursday, 
I actually participated in a call with Bishop Ryan that the clergy in uh, my main job, my main time consuming job is being at St. Francis College Station. So I'm in that Western region of the diocese. And uh, she asked about Camp Allen and I said, everything is great at Camp Allen. The nurses are bored. Nobody is sick. The nurses are bored. The campers are having a great time. And next week we have Johnny and friends coming in and they'll be here for two weeks. And um, we can't wait to have lots of people. We prepared everything we can for everybody to be safe. And we are on top of the world. That was Thursday, two o'clock phone call with the Bishop of your region. At five o'clock, the call came in from Johnny and friends that they were canceling both of their weeks with three days notice after all the food had been purchased, all the amenities had been purchased, everything had been bought and prepared for them to be here. And um, the local Johnny and friends got overruled by, because that very day uh, came the news on the TV that um, there was a surge in cases and that there was not gonna be enough in the hospitals for people. So not only did that raise the anxiety about, oh no, I'm gonna get the COVID, but I'm not gonna be able to be treated. And then they, the next morning, they withdrew that statement um, in, the, in the kind of panicky way it was presented. But that, that new stuff panicked lots of people and nurses started calling and canceling their ability to be here. Staff members, counselors started calling and said, my parents don't want me to go. A panic set in when this is about as safe a place as you can be right here. And so um, it, it just had a domino effect so that by Thursday night, um, there was no Johnny and Friends, that's two weeks worth of people. The first big conferences that it will have been here since March. And, um, and then by Friday morning, um, um, but because of the uh, nurses calling and things like that, the uh, next two weeks of summer camp were canceled. And so we went in several hours from feeling like we were on top of the world, going to be able to make it okay, and our staff would be okay, and um, we could be who we want to be, which is a great place of hospitality for our guests. So everything changed, and we've had to lay off some staff, and uh, because there's no sign of income until mom's camp. And it's just, um, things were hard. And we were sad because we know that we've done everything we can to make this a safe place. But we're also glad that we don't have the risk that all the kids who are disabled kids uh, from Johnny and Friends, Johnny Erickson Tata, the lady who long ago had the diving accident, and became a quadriplegic and uh, has started these camps around. Um, and, and that just mentioned a bit about the hospitality that Johnny and friends shows when they come here. They, um, they come and, and the staff is here two days preparing for them and uh, folding shirts and making signs and training the counselors who come here to take care of Johnny and friends campers. And Johnny and Friends counselors have to pay to come here to be a counselor. They have to pay. And they pay Johnny and Friends and they get to be trained and work all day long and all evening long for the privilege of paying to be here. That's how much it means to them to be able to provide that hospitality for those kids. And, um, and so then, when the campers start showing up, everything is decorated along the pathway where they would drive in. And they come in with loud music playing and a celebration happening and each individual kid 
is welcomed and has the rah rah and hoopla and you're the most wonderful you're the most precious we can't wait for you to be here we're so glad you've arrived let us take your bags and carry everything you possibly have with you to get you set up in your room and there's just elation over the kids faces the parents too they're there i mean it is kind of scary some kids get scared but they calm down when they realize it's all about love and welcome. And um, cause it's a great big giant Helen welcome. And um, so those were kind of the status right now is um, we are planning to reopen summer camp on July 12th. And we really hope that happens and we're planning for it to happen. And, uh, and we really hope that mom's camp makes. Uh, we're a little down in the census, but we're also okay with that so that we can provide the distance that's necessary. And um, um, so, so that's kind of our status right, right now. Uh, things are pretty slim. Uh, in August, we usually have three or four universities who do big giant 500 people events and take up every lodging, every every camp, every uh, campsite in the conference center, and those all canceled a couple of months ago. So it's um, it's really um, getting uh, it's it's a difficult time, but we are hopeful. We're very hopeful, and and. Um, and so it's not, uh, we're not thinking it gloom and doom. We're sad mainly because we don't get to do what we love, which is to provide hospitality to our guests. Um, is there, are there any other, any questions uh, yet about how things are? I imagine that's a really difficult place to be the spiritual director, right? To be the, to be the chaplain, to be the person who um, is providing that for all the staff um, and to be in a situation where there's a lot of that to be an agent of hope. It, uh, it is. I, um, I'm sort of one eighth time here, but it has been uh, a definitely uh, a whole different routine during COVID because of the need to support the staff and now to support those that have been laid off and to, um, to do these little worship services that, um, that I thought, well, you know, it's the same thing every day. It's the same noonday prayer and it's the same Compline and those are the short ones. And, but, you know, there's not a lot of variety in those, uh, except when I mix it up and break rules of prayer book laudum. And um, so it, um, uh, but the thing is, I thought, I'll just do these services uh, all over Camp Allen. I'll go to the places that people are missing so that they can see the places that they love here. And I'll just be a different place every single time. And um, so um, so we did start doing those. And I kind of backed off when summer camp started just because there was things on Facebook about camp. And I didn't want to kind of, I wanted that to be the premier emphasis. But people wrote and, and said they missed them, that they would like to have those services happen again. Um, and to show us more places. And so I, uh, I have yet to get to go over where there's the new little baby mini miniature horse. I hope to do I was one. so hoping that was going to be coming up soon. I'm like, oh, it is. I hope to get over there and maybe roam around with the goats and just have some baths in the background or however they are. And uh, so people can just see what's happening and um, and worship in a simple way um, because people are just, they know they can just take a short break and worship and then they can be about what they've just been. Um, I've had uh, parents call from my church uh, saying, 
my son was a seven year old son was really tired and really upset and really afraid was having fear again and um all of a sudden it came up on our our screen that camp allen was going live with compline and i asked my son if he would like to watch mother lacy on the um at, do worship and he said oh yes and he responded to all the responses and uh she said you know he went right to sleep after that was over and he's never mentioned having those fears again and what a blessing to be able to just by being at camp allen offering these to go into homes where even children have the attention span to watch a compline or a noonday prayer and receive comfort and um i was so blessed by that and i think that's one of the um keys of hospitality is that um yes we do it for the other person we do it for the sake of another but there's all these blessings and you'll hear the story time and time again where you've been there for you've gone to a place for the sake of another and walked away feeling incredibly blessed has that been your experience oh yeah yes Hey, Lacey, we saw you on Facebook and you were in front of the cabins by the lake. Are they still renting those out even now? Yes, yes. And they're what a uh, wonderful plants there, Mickey. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I, la yesterday there was a, on Facebook, there was an appeal from Camp Allen um, saying there were cabins available this 4th of July weekend. Sometimes mm -hmm. we hold the cabins back when summer camp is in session and only rent those to people that we know won't speed up and down the the roads or go try to get engaged with summer camp campers or you know or stalk the camper you know kind of mm -hmm. you know it's interesting it's very colorful lots of activities but we need people that we kind of know will stay up at the cabins um and so uh, there are, so when Camp Allen posted that, then I posted something with that. And um, so I thought today I'll go do a service by the lake I had mentioned in my post. And so that would emphasize the availability of the cabins. Uh, so it, it was all hospitality focused. You know, when I saw that come up for, um, for Camp Allen. Uh, somehow the screen just changed. There we go. Oh yeah, that was me showing the Camp Allen uh, cabin. Uh, so if you'd like to socially distance in the wood from everybody else, uh, there is a cabin. That's really in the woods. good. I should have uh, sent you some photos because <laughs> I tell you, Meredith really knows Next how to round. do all this stuff. I mean, she's amazing, and I I just need to. I, she doesn't even have to spend time with me. I just need to stalk her for a day. That's all that I really need to do. And uh, I can probably pick up how to do most of these things and, uh, and make our graphics a lot better, especially at, at uh, St. Francis College Station and Redeemer in Houston, and uh, where I, I do most of the social media badly. And, um, but at least it's up there. So anyway. But um, it has been, so that's been one thing in my role as spiritual director to, to be present to those that love Camp Allen by doing these worship services. And so people can see that. And not only that, the staff have responded greatly and people that have come and been, you know, chaplains in residence at Camp Allen, um, they, um, um, they have written back that that is important to them and and um Lacey are you still looking for chaplains from time to time at Camp Allen? Yes every chaplain canceled from uh March through June 1st. We And to clarify is is that can chaplain have to just be an ordained person or can they be a licensed worship leader? No no licensed worship leader yeah and y'all have, have sent a few us, in this room. <laughs> yes, y'all have sent us a wonderful licensed worship leader who does an excellent job. And and 
uh, not speaking to the clergy present, but the lay people actually are better chaplains. Well, so, the clergy are trying to be like, rest, Sabbath. <laughs> and, the, and the lay folks are like, let me engage this work wholeheartedly. And, so, and that's myself. true. That's exactly what the clergy come here for respite, renewal, um, uh, low key on people. And the lay people come here ready to serve. They, they sit around out in the lobby waiting for people to come talk to them while the clergy are like, where did they go? Where did they go? And so it, um, and that's all accurate, all accurate, because we want that for, for the clergy to be able to have a place to come and, and be well, able that's to. Well, it's a fair, fair thing to say, like, um, cause again, there are many licensed worship leaders in this room too, that, um, a way, um, a way to have some respite and to serve, um, connects with Lacey. And there's a certain times of the year we have lots of trouble finding people like August and um, sometimes in May is difficult because there's so many graduations and things like that. But we do want to keep having our daily worship here. Um, and um, it's it's been a blessing that for the staff members that you know, that we do the service at 7.30 and at five o'clock. Well, that's kind of when most staff members are not here. Uh, and so they don't usually attend our regular worship services, but they've been attending these online things. And uh, that's been a great blessing to me to know that the staff, you know, they can be sitting at their desk doing their work and still be able to worship. Um, and so it's been, for me, one way to reach out to the staff of Camp Allen. They've been reminded that I've been able to attend every staff meeting, which I normally don't because I'm up in College Station, uh, but been able to be visible and available in a much greater way to be able to attend to the staff. And um, last week was a hugely uh, sad, day on Friday and um, and it continued through Monday for Tuesday staff meeting when it was announced that we'd had some layoffs and that things were to keep having hope but save every dime you can and cut wherever you can and it you just don't usually hear that here at Camp Allen where we try to be focused on the abundance and yes to every guest questions and um, be able to minister that way. So, but, you know, I'm sure in each of your lives, you have th these disappointments of things you had planned that aren't happening right now and that can't happen. And the same fears that we're all, there is, you know, so much human solidarity in what is happening because it's happening to the whole world. And so we are united in a very strange way with humankind, unlike we've been in a very long time to all be going through something together, even though it's something really bad. Um, any other questions? Questions for Lacey. Well, are y'all still having camp for kids i mean my daughter went from the day she was third in third grade all the way till like she was too old to go unless she was a counselor i don't remember when that ended but she loved camp Allen, and i just didn't uh, my grandkids i haven't you know i just wondered if they still had campers to come by grades yes um they um we start at third grade and go up to 12th and we were able to have one session last week of primaries, which is third and fourth, middlers, fifth and sixth, and junior high, seven through nine. And so we were able to get in one session of camp uh, before we had to shut down uh, because of how extreme things got and we couldn't get personnel in. And um, the nurses and the uh, counselors, and we thought it best to just, um, with Austin and, and Houston being in very high alert and many people coming from those two locations, um, we, um, we had to just shut down for two weeks, but we fully intend to reopen July 12th. And um, it's, 
you know, I have a, a big affinity for the summer camping program. Um, I, um, I have done 19 years of summer camp. And I just had my 30th anniversary of being ordained. So Ooh, there, that's awesome, congratulations. Yeah. So there's 11 years I haven't done camp in all that time, but the other 19, I was there. And, uh, and I never did camp as a kid. And so to do camp as an adult and as a priest, um, and to just try to create that safe, warm, Christian hospitality kind of place where everybody feels welcome and feels loved and knows that they're special, not only in our eyes, but in God's eyes, that they are really, um, really special. And I, I um, one of the cool things was I have five nephews and one, I have four nephews and one niece and four of those uh, grew up at Camp Allen. They, I would do a third and fourth grade camp. The next year I'd do fifth and sixth, then back to third and fourth, fifth and sixth. I never went up to junior high because I'd been a youth minister and they just ate me for lunch. <laughs> I mean, I still remember my mantra from Good Shepherd Kingwood. No, don't <laughs> stop, quit. No, don't stop, quit. <laughs> I didn't ever <laughs> get that authority going there. So uh, anyway, I stayed with uh, third through um, uh, sixth grade. But my nephews and niece, they got to grow up with camp and be able to... Um, they were able to be then grow into counselors. And then the final year I did camp, um, three of them were my um, counselors in my session and one camper in my session. So there was, there was uh, five largents in one place. Oh, wow. and, uh, it was wonderful. And I remember, um, and this does have to do with hospitality. I'm not just ran roaming around here. But um, one day it was pouring down rain, pouring, pouring down rain. And so um, uh, we, we were like, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do with all these kids during this race? <laughs> and so, um, I mean, and you're talking about 70 people. Now we're, we have less than that this summer. We are, we, if a person backed out, we didn't fill their position because we wanted to have less kids. So there would be more social distancing. But anyway, we had 70 kids, 63 campers and the rest staff. And um, it was pouring down rain. I said to my nephew, um, you know, nephew Kenan, the kids are really scared about the dance tonight they're so afraid that they don't know how to dance and they don't know what they're going to do and be. And, and they're really self-conscious at this age. And I was just wondering, Kenan, if you might be could teach him to dance while it's raining. And um, he was so incredible. He went to the housekeeping closet and got all the housekeeping utensils, the the broom and the mop and the buckets and the and the dust pans and all that stuff and with those objects he taught those kids how to dance and as he danced with the broom and danced with the mop and he did his hips and he was very cute and the little girls were in love with him and just loved to see him move his hips and and then <laughs> practicing and um and he st stood up on one of the benches at Camp Allen so everyone could see. And he had the whole room doing broom, sweep a broom, broom, sweep a broom, and mo moving in certain ways. And so when those campers got to the dance that night, um, uh, and it got, Kenan would kind of call out the motion. And all of a sudden, my camp would start dancing all in the same way, right in the middle of the floor. And it would be to the rhythm of whatever song came up. And so I think that is a part of hospitality, to be able to go with the flow, see where people's anxieties are and where they're nervous, and be able to adapt to the moment to be able to send people this welcome. 
whether we do it as people arrive to our churches and we sense there are any hesitations they might have, um, you know, but to be able to adapt and be creative. And of course, we're all having to do that right now with the COVID uh, crisis. And, uh, and it's, it takes more energy. It takes a lot of energy for me anyway to be creative because I'm not naturally creative. Um, but um, so I think that being able to go with the flow is an aspect of what hospitality is about. I love that story, that image that you share in that. And I feel like all of us are being invited to give broom sweep, sweep a broom, right? Like to do something completely out of the ordinary. Um, that's a little bit different, a little bit weird, um, but but we're in it together. And so I really appreciate that kind of metaphor, that, that story you've shared with us. Don't worry, I'm not going to invite us to actually dance. Not on Zoom anyway. <laughs> not on, I mean, Jan, if you would like to start that, I will no. not. I will not. I will not stop you. <laughs> so, Maggie, just circle back to um, that. Like, and thinking about next year, God willing, hopefully, um, love to get your girls, your 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 grands, um, in summer camp. Um, and so every year uh, we start advertising that usually around November, December. Um, and generally, you want to sign up before. Uh, Christmas holidays because things fill um, and then there are sponsorships there are scholarships that Camp Allen has and then there um, are sponsorships that the church also um, helps with so there are questions for Lacey about hospitality about camp about um, court chaplaincy about dancing <laughs> Well, I enjoyed, I enjoyed listening to Mickey's sermon on Sunday, and it was a perfect time to, um, to really have this topic that y'all have brought up today um, because of the gospel text for, from this past Sunday that Mickey preached on, um, and um, she said, um, you know, that recent events have led us to need to be the church instead of just coming to church. And, um, and so it's really a, a prime time for us now to, to look at ways. It's very hard. I mean, it's not like we can go out into the mission field like we usually do and find some people to help because it's dangerous to really help people right now, other than, you know, sending money and, and doing the things that, that some people have been organized to do. Um, um, and I liked um, Mickey's point too, of the hospitality of the cab driver, where in the United States, it would have been something really scary to have done. And uh, to say, well, yes to the cab driver, I would like to come home with you and meet your family. Um, but to get to experience, and I guess even on the ships, you know, these were people from all over the world inviting me into their home. Once you enter the big tall part of that ship, that is their home. And to experience their hospitality. Um, and it was scary, some cultures. Now, after 16 years, I, I loved everything about it, um, but, um, you know, how can we be s really creative about the mission of the church and the outreach of hospitality? How can we let things we're doing on Zoom be known by people who aren't already a part of us um, so they can come, Facebook and YouTube and all of that? Um, it... Um, you know, and sometimes we bless people um, without even realizing what we're doing. Like, I was reading a story of the man who started uh, Whammo, which is the company that makes Frisbees. And this guy, they thought, well, we'll participate in a charity event. And so we're going to send a whole bunch of these Frisbees over to Angola, Africa. 
And they did. Well, sometime later, one of the representatives of the, I guess, the corporate social responsibility part of WAMO decided to make a visit to go over there. And, um, and what they found, uh, the, the sister that met him said, oh, thank you so much for these Frisbees. The kids really love them. They, um, they eat, it serves as their plate. They eat their food on them. They go to the river and they scoop out water to drink. And they have even learned how to catch fish with the Frisbees. Oh. And, um, and the many uses of that frisbee and then he says well by the way if you turn it over and throw it they're toys that's what we designed them for was toys and she said well they'll be delighted to play with them too now and but it was clear that the main reason what the main use would continue to be you know eating and on a good plate those things do not degrade and so to have a lifetime plate and a lifetime uh, cup for water. Um, but the surprise blessings in the, in sort of the simplest things that we do um, is, um, is amazing. Um, so it, it, um, there's, uh, we've ha tried to have kids come out here to Camp Allen for, um, social um, kind of service project weekends where kids would come out and we had all kinds of projects for them to do, whether it was mulching or cleaning an area that we hope to build something or things like that, but to give kids a chance to be of service to Camp Allen and uh, to be able to give back what they feel like they have been given here. And uh, so that's another dimension of hospitality is, is letting people serve, letting people minister, letting people have that authority and that blessing to be able to go forth and use their gifts. I think that's good reminders for us um, and the creativity it takes to be able to do that. So thank you, Lacey. All right, a couple of quick questions. Oh, yes. One of the creative ways that um, that Trinity has has um, has been doing since we've all been away from the church building is that Rhonda over there, Rhonda organizes a phone tree, and every week everybody in the ch church gets a call, you know, just to say, "Hey, we're still here. Is everything okay?" Um, you know, how are you doing? Just to make sure that, that we're reaching out to everybody. There's no way that Meredith and I could be doing that every week. And Rhonda has just garnered all these different people. All, every single week they're making these calls. And it's just been probably one of the best blessings ever. And many of the people making the calls are in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, yeah, I think that's a wonderful um, way of showing hospitality. Yes, so we, it, you know, and it helps keep people connected. And, and being connected is what uh, we long for in, in life, is to be connected, to feel like we matter, to, um, and to be reached out to like y'all are doing, to to people it's and to have it where it's not the clergy necessarily doing that where people are hearing from each other because people have said you know that the church um you know it's the church is its people and that the priests will come and go the clergy will come and go but uh the people are the ones who are the church and when they reach out and that uh, I remember Bishop Doyle saying to my church in St. Uh, College Station, he said, you know, what, what, what's your stickability? What's your stickability? And he meant, you know, why do people stay here? You know, and rarely do people stay because they think the priest is great. You know, they, you know, they stay because people, uh, each other have reached out to each other. 
and connected. So they stay because there's a place for them with other people. And, um, and so that's wonderful, Rhonda, that you're organizing that and um, uh, being able to, to re-emphasize at a time when we're all separated, to emphasize the care of one another for each other. That's wonderful. I do think that, that has been um, a really particularly powerful ministry during this COVID time. I am so grateful to the people who volunteer week in and week out. Um, we set it up in two week intervals. So <clears throat> if you volunteer, you're not signing on, you know, until December. Uh, but, but I've had people from the very beginning that have always said, and some of them were in this room, you know, who have said, oh yeah, put me down for the next two weeks. I absolutely want to continue to do that. And you're right, Lacey. I mean, Brene Brown, I think, puts it beautifully. She says, we are hardwired for connection. Communion. And, and that is so much a part of what the church is and does that is at its core hospitality. And so all I do is, is get the volunteers and divide up the alphabet and get the reports. And if there's needs or concerns, then I pass those along to the clergy. But it's, it's the people who step up and volunteer and make the phone calls that deserve all the credit for that ministry. Thank you. So uh, James was sharing with me a, a reminder of a good hymn of uh, uh, just that we, uh, you know, we are the church, right? Um, and so uh, um, here, let me uh, get this off for a second. All right, and we won't play the whole just a reminder of a here we go the church is not a steeple the church is not a resting place the church is a people i am the church you are the church we are the church Follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. All right, just a brief interlude. So thank you, James. I think it, it then that music captures what we're talking about, right? That was very timely and excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the talks at Kairos that they do is we are the church. Mm. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. and that's also one of the songs that we do yeah. every Kairos weekend. Mm. I love that. I mean, that, I can see that thread of hospitality. So I've got a question for you, Lacey. Um, you share about how much uh, Camp Allen is a ministry of hospitality. And I know things are difficult, but I'm imagining, because it's part of our ministry in the Episcopal Church, what are ways in which you might be able to envision, and maybe you don't have an answer for it yet, long-winded question, sorry. Um, how might we um, offer hospitality to the people and the employees at Camp Allen from where we are? Well, uh, one thing that we, we started right when this happened, and we knew that we have people that are salaried, um, and then most of our people, and there's, that's like a management team, and then we have people that are hourly workers. And so right away, we started something called the Grace Fund. And the Grace Fund is solely to be used for helping employees and for helping supplement uh, their wages and being able to provide. We were able almost every other week to send employees home with, with lots and lots of food a lot of which was donated by um, the um, by uh, Molly Carr and the Abundant Harvest group came and brought their we brought food because she had such a supply and we were able to divide that up uh, and give boxes of food and toilet paper and bread and things like that staples for the employees 
Um, and that grace fund still exists and it's a way to uh, give to Camp Allen in such a way that the employees have a little bit more protection. And, Thank you uh, for sharing that. Um, I'll confess that as a priest of this diocese, I didn't know about that. And so I will say that on behalf of Trinity, we will contribute towards that. Um, uh, because it's a, a powerful, important ministry of our diocese. It's also, if I'm wrong, I could be mistaken, the largest employer in Grimes County. It is. Right? It is. Um, and so, I mean, there, there's a piece here that's like um, lots of layers. So. Um, so uh, we, 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 will, we will join in offering some grace in that and uh, hopefully some of our other colleagues can know it exists too. <laughs> so if, um, if, people, if people just wanted to send money to that grace fund, would they just send it to Camp Allen? Yes, or you can go online to the donate button if, if you wanna use a credit card or PayPal. And uh, there's several ways to give uh, we, we have our centennial fund, which is how, and that's been sort of a mind trip right now because we're continuing to build the Bishop Doyle Center, which is a very large dining hall that will eventually serve every campsite at one time. Oh, <laughs> that's and, a lot. And it's an, an extra, uh, it's an extra, uh, campsite as well. There's four bunk houses associated with that. And so uh, basically we can go here, right? Ways to give. Uh-huh. And then we go to give online. Okay. And then is there a way that we mark it for the grace fund? Let's see. I'm not seeing what you're seeing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um I don't want to mess it up here, but yes, you, there's a way that you can show, um, if you go to that donate button and there's mm -hmm. another way you can click and the centennial fund is, uh, is what we're building and it'll be ready at our centennial, which is next year. And, okay. um, and then we have, uh, the starry nights kind of thing and then we have scholarship stuff in summer camp but under that same drop down menu is the grace fund and that's um uh for employees and ongoing uh things that we need it for and in the summer uh, i think we we have around 85 full-time employees uh or 85 staff all together they're not all full-time but in the summer, that goes up to a hundred and something because of summer camp, because we have additional uh, senior staff, and then we have uh, resident counselors and things like that. So it's a pretty amazing number to think about a hundred people being out here in the yeah, summer yeah. when things are really going on. Well, uh, I might have to have you send me a link later, and then we'll put that in our thing because uh, I'm I'm struggling to find it. But um oh bummer just, that's good to know. Um, <laughs> but, I mean that doesn't necessarily mean it's not there. It just <laughs> means the denseness isn't getting through. Which you know I'm prideful <laughs> enough to think that's a good litmus test for others. <laughs> we always uh that's another another aspect of hospitality <laughs> is welcoming <laughs> things that don't work as gifts <laughs> to us so we can be better. So but so <laughs> So, um, so offering grace to the employees, but um, I just also, um, I'm mindful that just how, what a, what a difficult place you all are in and how, um, how we could be praying for you, like actively praying. And I confess, I don't think I realized the level of that impact um, that it has on so many people's lives and the mission of Jesus Christ in that place. Um, and so I think fair to say y'all, right, um, we're going to be keeping Camp Allen and her people in our prayers. Yes, absolutely. Well, and it, it kind of shows the impact of fear as well, you know, because people, this is a place where you can be outdoors a lot, where you can distance a lot. There's only four chairs to a table in the dining hall. Um, it's a place where 
everything is in place for people to be safe, to have a time apart, and uh, to be fed by the grounds and by the experience that they're here for. But fear is really, um, it's, there's a hard distinction right now between fear and safety. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to distinguish the two sometimes. Yeah, it's a difficult subject, especially for those of us who are more vulnerable, which is most everybody in this room, uh, myself included. And, you know, this, the, you know, what's fear, what's stewardship, what's, you know, all of this stuff. But just know that you all have our prayers. You do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, any other we appreciate them. Any other final questions for Lacey? You did too good a job of explaining everything. We don't have questions. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, it's been a delight to have you with us. Thank you for uh, making this space. Thank you for answering uh, uh, Deacon Mickey's call and saying yes to join us, um, to sharing some about the Ministry of Hospitality and yourself. So thank you. Thank you. It was a delight to be here. Thank you, Lacey. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, I do want to say before we close in some prayer, um, just uh, and Lacey, you're you're welcome to join us too. Uh, but uh, next week we're gonna have um, Brother Michael Gallagher join us, um, the Benedictine uh, monk with Holy Cross in Beaumont. So do tune in next week. Um, I Ooh. just want to say once more, um, thank you, uh, thank you, Lacey. And will you close us in a prayer? Yes, let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we celebrate your presence in our midst this evening. We celebrate connecting with one another around something that we value so highly, which is Christian hospitality, which is made manifest in our churches, and made manifest in institutions in places like Camp Allen, which seek to serve and love those who come to it. Gracious God, you've called us into managing very difficult times and being able to reach out to people, to be prepared for people, to be welcomed whatever way that we can come into their lives and come into their homes, whether it be through this Zoom or, or Facebook Live or Vimeo or YouTube. We've all now learned a great deal more language and been challenged to learn these different things. But Lord God, we do that for the sake of connecting with your people and to binding the Christian community together any way that we can, because this will be how we sustain ourselves with your help over this time, is to remain connected and remain committed to our, who we are and who, to our identity as children of you. We know that you are grieved by the pain in the world right now. We know that that you just reach out to us in every kind of way to comfort us, to give us endurance, to give us resilience, that you are equipping us to manage the very difficult things in our world right now. So we do ask your continued blessing, your continued presence in our lives and in our hearts, for we know that you're never farther away than right inside us as your spirit lives within us. Help us to connect to you, no matter where we are and who or who we're with, to always be able to maintain that connection with you that empowers our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.